aspirations of a championship team. A real champion is the team that can take adversity in stride. It is a team that can capitalize on the good breaks. A team that when its back is to the wall will make the big play. But there's more to a championship basketball team. There's an attitude, a relentless, stubborn, tenacious will to win. An instinct that says when the other team is down by five, make it 10. And when you've got him by 10, make it 15. There's something to be said for a series that brings two such teams together. Teams that met six times during regular season play and came away with an even split. Neither team being able to win on the other's ground. Teams that emerged clearly superior in their respective divisions. But now, now they'd be meeting head on in a seven game series. And one of the teams, New Orleans or Pittsburgh, would be crowned the ABA champion. Coach Vince Cazetta of the Pittsburgh Pipers had this appraisal. We feel they're very similar to us in many ways. They're about even us in height. They have the same amount of speed. They have uh, great shooting uh, and uh, great mobility. They certainly have a, a real fine ball player in Doug Moe. And uh, of course, Red Robbins is uh, certainly a fine ball player. And uh, their backcourt of Jones and Brown is, is extremely good. Uh, they're matched very well with us. You couldn't ask for a better series, having two ball clubs of the same caliber, the same type play, and the same type players. And here's what Babe McCarthy, coach of the New Orleans Buccaneers, Western Division champions, had to say. They've got Hawkins, a fine, fine basketball player, but they have good balance. Charlie Williams is a great guard. They have good rebounding. Artie Heyman is one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in the league. So I think the clubs are similar. And coming into a championship playoff, the two best ball clubs in the league meeting, I think it's, it's the way it should be. The Bucks would have Red Robbins at center, Doug Moe and Jack Moreland at forwards, Larry Brown and Jimmy Jones at the guards. The Pipers would start Connie Hawkins at center, Tom Washington and Art Heyman at the forwards, and Charlie Williams and Chico Vaughn at the guards. Game one, played April 18th at Pittsburgh, started as a duel between two men, 6'8 Red Robbins of the Bucks and 6'8 Connie Hawkins of the Pipers. Both men played superbly on offense, with Hawkins netting 39 points and Robbins getting 41. This is the redhead, number 21. And again, this time on the quick passing of Larry Brown and Jack Moreland. And now the Hawk. This is Heyman on a fine turnaround jumper. Charlie Williams pumping over a screen by Leroy Wright. And now the 6'7", Tom Washington. Hawkins again. With Hawkins and Washington hitting the boards and the fast break working, this one from Jarvis to Williams, the Pipers were just too tough in game one. And Heyman's final jumper made it 120 to 112. And the Pipers had the series opener. So Pittsburgh headed for game two with a full measure of confidence. Or hadn't they demonstrated their superiority over the Buccaneers? Colorful, exciting, it was the ABA, a new style of basketball kind of game that was reviving interest around the country, not only in the fans, but in industry. And here in the Pittsburgh locker room was an example of such interest. Pro Keds, the official shoe of the ABA. Babe McCarthy's club came out for the second game, determined to make the Pipers play their style of ball. Larry Brown set the pace, slowing the game, working for the good shot, looking for the open man like Doug Moe at the free throw line. The Bucks knew too that against Hawkins and Washington, their own big men, Red Robbins, Doug Moe, and Jack Moreland would have to be at their best. Here's Robbins. Doug Moe from the left side. And Moreland from the right. 
While the Buccaneers' deliberate style was having its effect, the Piper's great offense couldn't be completely stopped. Here's Jim Jarvis on an outside jumper. And again on a shovel pass from the Hawk. But New Orleans kept up the pressure. Here's Jimmy Jones driving around Tom Washington. By the fourth quarter, New Orleans had completely upset the Piper's rhythm. What had been a high-powered run-and-shoot offense was now, for the most part, bogged down by personal fouls and turnovers. With just minutes left, and sparked by Hawkins, Vaughn, and Williams, the Pipers began a desperate rally. This is the Hawk on a soft turnaround jumper. New Orleans was right back with Larry Brown. Here's Chico Vaughn on a beautiful outside one-hander were three points. Williams one-on-one -on -one against Brown. But the Buccaneers' strategy and the fine play of Brown, Moe, Robbins, and Jones even the series. Final score, 109-100. to 100. ...of a championship team. A real champion is a team that can take adversity in stride. ...of a championship team. A real champion is a team that can take adversity in stride. It is a team that can capitalize on the good breaks. A team that when its back is to the wall, will make the big play. But there's more to a championship basketball team. There's an attitude, a relentless, stubborn, tenacious will to win. An instinct that says when the other team is down by five, make it 10. And when you've got him by 10, make it 15. There's something to be said for a series that brings two such teams together. Teams that met six times during regular season play and came away with an even split, neither team being able to win on the other's ground. Teams that emerged clearly superior in their respective divisions. But now, now they'd be meeting head-on in a seven-game series, and one of the teams, New Orleans or Pittsburgh, would be crowned the ABA champion. Coach Vince Cazetta of the Pittsburgh Pipers had this appraisal. We feel they're very similar to us in many ways. They're about even with us in height. They have the same amount of speed. They have uh, great shooting uh, and uh, great mobility. They certainly have a, a real fine ball player in Doug Moe. And, uh, of course, Red Robbins is uh, certainly a fine ball player. And uh, their backcourt of Jones and Brown is, is extremely good. Uh, they're matched very well with us. You couldn't ask for a better series, having two ball clubs of the same caliber, the same type play, and the same type players. And here's what Babe McCarthy, coach of the New Orleans Buccaneers Western Division champions, had to say. They've got Hawkins, a fine, fine basketball player, but they have good balance. Charlie Williams is a great guard. They have good rebounding. Artie Heyman is one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in the league. So I think the clubs are similar. And coming into a championship playoff, the two best ball clubs in the league meeting, I think it's, it's the way it should be. The Bucks would have Red Robbins at center, Doug Moe and Jack Moreland at forwards, Larry Brown and Jimmy Jones at the guards. The Pipers would start Connie Hawkins at center, Tom Washington and Art Heyman at the forwards, and Charlie Williams and Chico Vaughn at the guards. Game one, played April 18th at Pittsburgh, started as a duel between two men, 6'8 Red Robbins of the Bucks and 6'8 Connie Hawkins of the Pipers. Both men played superbly on offense, with Hawkins netting 39 points and Robbins getting 41. This is the redhead, number 21. And again, this time on the quick passing of Larry Brown and Jack Moreland. And now the Hawk. But the outstanding performance of Red Robbins was offset by the fine play of Pitts, Art Heyman, Charlie Williams, and Tom Washington. This is Heyman on a fine turnaround jumper. Charlie Williams pumping over a screen by Leroy Wright. And now the 6'7", Tom Washington. 
Hawkins again. With Hawkins and Washington hitting the boards and the fast break working, this one from Jarvis to Williams, the Pipers were just too tough in game one. And Heyman's final jumper made it 120 to 112. And the Pipers had the series opener. So Pittsburgh headed for game two with a full measure of confidence. For hadn't they demonstrated their superiority over the Buccaneers? Hadn't they played the kind of basketball the fans enjoy? They had. It was the wide open run and shoot style that better than one and a quarter million fans had enjoyed during the past season. Colorful, exciting, it was the ABA, a new style of basketball. The kind of game that was reviving interest around the country, not only in the fans, but in industry. And here in the Pittsburgh locker room was an example of such interest. Pro Keds, the official shoe of the ABA. Babe McCarthy's club came out for the second game, determined to make the Pipers play their style of ball. Larry Brown set the pace, slowing the game, working for the good shot, looking for the open man, like Doug Moe at the free throw line. The Bucks knew, too, that against Hawkins and Washington, their own big men, Red Robbins, Doug Moe, and Jack Moreland, would have to be at their best. Here's Robbins. Doug Moe from the left side. And Moreland from the right. While the Buccaneers' deliberate style was having its effect, the Pipers' great offense couldn't be completely stopped. Here's Jim Jarvis on an outside jumper. And again on a shovel pass from the Hawk. But New Orleans kept up the pressure. Here's Jimmy Jones driving around Tom Washington. By the fourth quarter, New Orleans had completely upset the Piper's rhythm. What had been a high-powered run-and-shoot offense was now for the most part bogged down by personal fouls and turnovers. With just minutes left and sparked by Hawkins, Vaughn and Williams, the Pipers began a desperate rally. This is the Hawk on a soft turnaround jumper. New Orleans was right back with Larry Brown. Here's Chico Vaughn on a beautiful outside one-hander were three points. Williams one-on-one -on -one against Brown. But the Buccaneers strategy and the fine play of Brown, Moe, Robbins, and Jones, even the series. Final score, 109 to 100. The Buccaneers had earned a split at Pittsburgh and now headed back to New Orleans and their home court for the third and fourth game. Wednesday night, April 24th, and better than 7,000 Buccaneer fans jammed Loyola Fieldhouse. This is Coach Babe McCarthy chatting with ABA Commissioner George Mikan. Sparked by the fine play of Vaughn and Williams, the Pipers completely dominated the ball game for more than three quarters. Here's Chico on a drive up the lane. And again on a fast break. Hawkins moving out of the pivot to open up the lane. Fine pass from Heyman. And Washington gets a cripple. The Pipers were going great now. And in the third quarter, rambled out in front by as many as 18 points. But the Bucks were still hustling, still determined. Here's the redhead on a tip-in. Then in the fourth quarter, 
with just five minutes left. And behind 97 to 87, the buck steady. Then came Alive, fired by Jackie Moreland. Doug Moe and Red Robbins, they caught the Pipers with just a minute and a half left in the game. Here's Moreland. Moe. And now Robbins. Finally taking the lead, the Bucks turned it into an eight-point cushion as the Pipers' offense sputtered to a standstill. Final score, 109 to 101. The Pipers going the final five minutes with just four points and the last two and a half minutes without a score. A fine defensive job by Doug Moe, Red Robbins, and Jack Moreland held Hawkins, Washington, and Heyman to a total of 47 points, nearly 18 points under their scoring average. The fourth game, again before standing room only crowd at Loyola Fieldhouse, was a must game for the Pipers. Should they lose, it would be back to Pittsburgh down three games to one. Yet, the fourth game was important for another reason. For this was the game the Pipers appeared to have lost and then won. New Orleans began the game playing just as steadily, as confidently as they had ended the previous game. Keyed by the brilliant passing of Larry Brown and Jimmy Jones, the Bucks established an early lead and then grimly hung on. 6-7 Jesse Branson on an outside jumper. Jack Moreland, wide open. Moreland, quick pass to Moe. Inside, outside, the Buccaneers kept the pressure on. Branson again. Moe on his jumper. In the final period, Connie Hawkins began to turn the game around. Here's the Hawk doing what he does best. And again, with a great hook shot. The Pipers finally moved into the lead with this jumper by Charlie Williams. Pittsburgh by three, and the clock is running. But the Bucks aren't dead yet. Mo tries a three-pointer. Rebound to New Orleans. This will be it, their last chance. Note how Brown gets outside the 25-foot zone before launching his two-hand set. time both clubs traded basket for basket until the final second and then it was one man one clutch free throw Pittsburgh's Charlie Williams was the man final Pittsburgh 106 New Orleans 105 and the Pipers tied the series to all game four was important not only for the Pipers victory but for the Pipers loss for during that overtime Connie Hawkins had torn a ligament in his right knee. How valuable was Hawkins? Here's what Pittsburgh coach Vince Cassetta had to say. Connie, I think, is the greatest basketball player in the world today. He's a complete ball player, does everything, and he's of great value to us. We've won uh, three or four ball games without him during the season. I'd hate to have to go through a season or a series without him, Harvey. Now it was back to Pittsburgh for game five. And while the Pipers would have the advantage of their home court, they would face a stubborn, determined foe without the league's most valuable player. Game five was unusual because for the first time since game number one, it appeared the Pipers' offense was really beginning to click, even without Hawkins. Able to offer only moral support to his teammates, Hawkins on the bench, 
was a handicap the Pipers almost overcame. With Vaughn, Williams, Heyman, Washington, and Porter, the Pipers almost carried it off. Charlie Williams scoring. Here's Vaughn going all the way. New Orleans stayed close, though, matching the Pipers basket for basket. This is Heyman. And now Robbins. It took this 35-footer by Heyman as the half ended to give the Pipers a four-point bulge at the intermission. But in the end, it was the free throw that beat them. The Buccaneers showing why they were the best free throw shooting team in the league. New Orleans netted a fantastic 41 of 51 gift shots, better than 80%. This is Larry Brown, and the little guy had a perfect night at the line, making seven of seven. But the best example of who beat the Pipers was Doug Moe. The 6'5 forward cashed 17 of 20 free throws. Behind in the closing seconds, the Pipers gambled with a full court press and gave up this easy cripple to Jack Moreland. That made it 111 to 108. Now it would be back to New Orleans with the Buccaneers enjoying a 3 to 2 edge in the series. Game six was a must for the Pipers. Lose this one, and there'd be no tomorrow. Would a healthy Hawkins make the difference? Could his knee take the punishment? Game six provided a positive answer on both counts. Hawkins could and would make the difference. Tape and brace, the Hawk played the full 48 minutes and ran in 41 points to lead the Pipers to a 118 to 112 win. Here he is from long range. But for nearly three quarters, the New Orleans club appeared headed for the ABA championship. A tremendous second period for the Bucks almost turned the game into a rout as they racked up 40 points. Here's Red Robbins. Doug Moe. Robbins again. Here's Jimmy Jones on a steal. driving around Washington for two. And a tip in by the redhead. At the half, it was 72 to 59. The Buccaneers sitting on a 13 point lead, but the cushion didn't last. Handicapped by fouls, Jimmy Jones and Larry Brown had to play loose against the ABA's best offensive machine. And the Pipers took full advantage of it, closing the gap and then forging ahead. This is Art Heyman on a driving layup. Charlie Williams. And Jim Jarvis. Final score in game six, 118 to 112. As the Pipers backs to the wall, and forced to play catch-up basketball did just that and scored a tremendous victory. So it came down to one last game, a final 48 minutes, a final confrontation between the best in the West and the best in the East. And this game would be played on the Pipers' home court, the Pittsburgh Civic Arena. Game number seven, the evening of May 4th, and 11,457 Pittsburgh fans were on hand to see the Pipers play the kind of basketball they play best, the run-and-shoot game. And next come the Pro Keds. The Pipers broke out on top, and after the first few minutes, it was obvious this was the pit offense that had made a shambles of the ABA, the offense that had swept through the Eastern Division playoffs, losing just one game. Here's Tom Washington breaking the ice. Doug Moe on an 18-foot jumper. Loose ball. And 
Heyman leading a three-on-one fast break. Williams, and he's fouled by Brown. Williams again, this time from the outside. At the 12-minute mark, it was the Pipers in front by four. New Orleans came right back in the second quarter and cut the lead to two with this basket by Jimmy Jones. The Pipers matched it by Jarvis. And then a blindingly fast steal by Heyman. Number 12 again, all alone under the New Orleans basket. Even the fine shooting of Jimmy Jones wasn't enough to head off the Pipers' running game. And by halftime, the Pipers had surged to a 67 to 55 lead. Nor did the 20 minute intermission cool off the Pittsburgh club. Vaughn started the second half with a three pointer as the Pipers continued to open up their lead. And at one time in the third period had forged a 20 point cushion. Hawkins misses, but Washington was there. The Buccaneers weren't finished yet. And sparked by Jimmy Jones and Doug Moe, the Bucks began to come back. Here's Jones, wide open. Mo on a jumper from about 12 feet. And again, this time over Heyman. Hawkins just trying to play keep away. Jones steals and Robbins cashes it. New Orleans on the attack. Larry Brown bringing it up. And Brown pumps from the top of the key. Charlie Williams matches it. And here's Brown again. But at the quarter, the Pipers still held a commanding lead, 102 to 86. The Buccaneers rallied in the final period. Robbins scoring here. But the Pittsburgh lead was too big though they closed the gap to five points three different times in the final period, the Bucks didn't quite have enough. This is Heyman, and the Pipers were able to spurt ahead each time. Larry Brown on a steal. This was the deciding game of the ABA championship. It was a game the Pipers couldn't lose, a game they wouldn't lose. This is Heyman on a fast break. In the end, it was the Pittsburgh speed that won it. Charlie Williams leading all scorers with 35 points. Hawkins finishing with 20. Doug Moe, while playing a great game against Hawkins, finished with 28. Final score, the seventh and deciding game of the ABA championship, Pittsburgh 122, New Orleans 113. It took the full seven games and though the outcome had been in doubt several times, the Pipers finally proved what they had known all along, that they were indeed the best in the ABA. has been an official ABA presentation in association with Pro Keds, a division of Uniroyal, and the 3M Company. <laughs>